I'm Scott Allen Miller, and this is my everyday life living in my own Nicaragua. Wow, as I started recording, the sun came out very strong. It was nice and cloudy when I started this video. But today, I had a viewer ask a question. I find this one really odd, but it's someone who lives here and asked me to do a comparison between coastal living and inland living, which I don't think is going to be the comparison that makes sense the way that you think it is, but it's worth discussing. Someone had the question, so let's get into it right after the bump. Now that the sun is out fully, I at least know where the shade is so I can stand in that. This is a, the lighting is really terrible today. Maybe if I do this, is that, oh, there we go. That's a bit better. Okay, sorry about that, guys. Okay, so the advantage here is that I am actually a bi-regional living person here in Nicaragua. I live on the beach and I live in the city and I've lived downtown and in the suburbs. So I have kind of a cross section of living in different areas uh, within the same zone um, and have lived in completely different zones as well. But the, when comparing the coast to inland, you really kind of need to live in the same departmento to have a feeling for what that can be like what's making the coast versus the inland different rather than being just different by departmento. And of course, if you were to compare uh, coastal living in Chinandega to inland living in Boaco, it's gonna be wildly different because Boaco doesn't have a coastal zone. So you're going to be comparing departmentos and their regional cultures rather than comparing the difference between the coast and inland. Okay, so that being said, let's jump into it. In our first year living here, we lived completely on the coast. We thought that that was what we were going to want as new expats coming to the country, even though we had lived here previously, even though we've lived all over the world, in general, we like living pretty close to the coast. And whether we were living in Spain or Italy or Greece, we always had a view of the ocean. When we lived in Panama, we lived feet off of the sand. And uh, when we came to Nicaragua, we were pretty sure that we wanted to live directly on the coast. Over time, we decided that we do like coastal living, but we don't like living directly on the sand. We like being a little bit farther away. There are some reasons for that, but that's what we're going to be talking about today in coastal versus inland living. So that was our first year experience. Our second year was in downtown and our third year is in the suburbs in between downtown and the coast, but all within a relatively small amount of area. Now, over here in Leon, we talk about this a lot on the show. It is the only city where the city is near to the coast. Everywhere else in the country, say Managua is an example. It is hours from the city to its coastal uh, uh, villages, right? So if you're going to push a meal from Managua, you're looking at nearly two hours of travel. It's not a big deal. You can totally do it. You could probably do it in less than two hours. It depends on traffic. You could definitely take over two hours if it's a holiday weekend. But it's not something you just grab a taxi and go to. You don't just take an inner city or an intra-city bus and head over there. Whereas in Leon, the intra-city buses go out there. The taxis go out there. So we're a different animal where we directly have coastal and non-coastal living in the same kind of general area. So it's very unique here in the country. You can argue that Chinandega is a little bit similar with Corinto, but Corinto is its own animal because it's a port. So we won't consider that for general coastal living. Everything about it would be would come off as a negative, even though it's a perfectly fine place. Place, but it has a lot of trucking traffic. It has a lot of ships coming, container ships coming in. Like it's, it's an odd duck as far as Nicaragua goes. I definitely am interested if any of you are living in Corinto or are interested in Corinto, get down there in those comments. I want to hear from you guys, see what you're thinking. If anyone actually lives there, maybe someone wants to give us a tour and go do stuff. My first episode that really caught our attention on this show and, and helped grow it when I had no idea that people were interested in Nicaragua content was a show about Corinto. So definitely it caught people's attention, but I've never had someone who didn't have family there already. Like if you're from there, of course you might move back, but anyone who's choosing it is like, oh, I'm really interested in Nicaragua and Corinto is the place I want to be. I've never met anyone who said that. So if that's you, definitely hit me up. I want to know. Anyway, so uh, when we're talking about coastal living, this, this is a difficult comparison. Like I'm, I'm going to struggle on this one, guys. Um, the, the coast in Nicaragua has traditionally not been a place that people live. Traditionally, it's all fishing villages with the exception of San Juan del Sur. Now, San Juan del Sur was still a fishing village. It was still a place where people put out boats and went and caught fish. But for a very long time, essentially the entire history of Nicaragua as a country, San Juan del Sur has been a portage location. If you look at a map and you look at the river coming from the uh, Caribbean coast, going all the way, the Rio San Juan, going all the way up to Lago Nicaragua, or Lago Cosibolsa, as it's called here, uh, then 
look to the west, there is the village of Lover Hen, and the highway then, or highway, a <laughs> little, little stretch of the term, but it's a nice road running into San Juan del Sur. If you uh, I, we have a little bit of fuzz. That was an insect crawling on the lens. Uh, if you look at that, that was the original portage for Vanderbilt's railroad. So you would bring your cargo down. If you were working with the railroad, you would uh, they would ship it down, go up the river, across the lake, and then take the boat that they were shipping on, pull it out of the lake, drag it down what is now the road to San Juan del Sur, not the Chocolati, the main road, drag it down that road, up to the, the the harbor and then put it into the bay at San Juan del Sur, and then they would continue on their way to the west coast of the United States. So San Juan del Sur has long been a portage location primarily, a fishing village, yes, in time immemorial before that, I'm sure, but for hundreds of years, it has been important as a portage location. And famously-ish, it was the primary port for Americans embarking uh, to California for the gold rush. So the famous 49ers went through San Juan del Sur. Nicaragua plays a really important role in that part of American history. Uh, and that part of American history contributed heavily to the William Walker era of colonialism here in Nicaragua as well, both to its creation and to its downfall. So San Juan del Sur is a different animal from a historical perspective, but the rest of the coast is really just all fishing villages traditionally. So that's important. All the cities have always been inland. They still are all inland. No cities have popped up on the coast. Nicaragua's coast doesn't lend itself to large populations. A lot of it is um, uh, marshy. A lot of it has estuaries. A lot of it has um, just, just low-lying poor water availability. You just can't put large populations easily out on the coast without causing some problems. San Juan del Sur can probably handle the largest. It has mountains really close to the water, and that means it has a lot of solid ground that you can build on, and it has the slopes to go up, so a lot more structures can look at the water. So you have a lot of people able to, to be a part of the coast, even though they're not directly on the sand. But if you live in most of Nicaragua, being on the coast basically implies that you're on a single road running along the water, and either you're directly on the sand or you're on the other side of the street. Now, of course, if you're in Ponoloy or, or Las Benitas, someplace like that, there is a second road or a third road behind, and you could live there. And of course, that's still coastal living, but not beachfront living. So it's a little bit different. But generally, because things are very flat against the water, you're basically considered to be on the beach or across the street from the beach, or you're probably not in a in a, a, a beachfront community at all. It tends to go that way. Whereas in San Juan del Sur, you have a whole region of people who live near the coast. Uh, but if you were the same distance here, we wouldn't consider it coastal living. So, But it's because of the mountains. They can see the coast from quite some ways away. It, it creates a completely different style of being near the water or being within sight of the water. So that's always going to be a special case down there. Uh, but for the majority of these communities, they're very small. So mostly when we're talking about Nicaraguan coastal living, one of two things happens now that time has moved forward and people do live on the coast. In northern Nicaragua, we generally still have these small Nicaraguan communities uh, that are just fishing villages that have grown up. They all have some amount of tourist traffic. Lots of it is Nicaraguan. Some of it is foreigners, uh, and uh, they're generally small villages, and they definitely feel that way. There isn't enough tourism to create a big ecosystem anywhere along the coast. So you have small boutique hotels, you have small restaurants, you have little local communities, and then small amounts of people flooding in and out. So if you want to live on the coast in most of northern uh, Nicaragua, you're talking about traditional Nicaraguan fishing villages that have just gained population. And of course, being coastal, they have a higher than normal percentage of foreigners who have moved in. So all of them are going to have some amount of foreigners or extran heroes living there. That's completely normal, but none of them are going to be, or very, very, very rarely are they going to be enclaves. We do have a few really isolated spots where someone went into a place with no community and artificially built a little enclave. I don't know of any that are uh, large or successful in northern Nicaragua. It is so not an enclave zone. I do know of one. We've heard reports that it is an abject failure. People are panicking to get out. They're just they're unable to provide basic services well, and uh, and prices have plummeted because it it was not a fully thought out plan. That's kind of what we would expect up here. The idea that someone would move to northern Nicaragua and want to live in an enclave is a little bit strange because so much of Southern Nicaragua is enclave living that there's so much available for that, right? And then once you have it, you don't 
try to create another one. It just doesn't make sense. So up here, you tend to live on the coast when you want to really be in Nicaragua. You're not trying to avoid it. You're not trying to recreate the United States or Canada or Europe. Uh, and you want to uh, have this, you know, fishing village, but with, you know, surfing and with uh, restaurants and with, uh, you know, nightlife, because most of the beaches will have some kind of nightlife, just like the rest of Nicaragua, right? You're going to have nightlife and that stuff. And and really, I think that the key thing is that other than that there's some fishing, other than that there's the sound of waves and there's no cities along the coast, the only thing that really differentiates coastal living from city living is the size of the population here in Nicaragua, in northern Nicaragua. That's just that's the basics, right? It's It doesn't feel like a different place. When I go out dancing on the coast, it's the same as going out dancing in the city. It's just much smaller numbers of people, fewer venues. When you want to go see live music, again, fewer people, fewer venues. But it's all the same music, all the same bands, all the same lifestyle, all the same activities. Um, now, the fishing villages do tend to be poorer uh, because there aren't a lot of jobs outside of service jobs, which don't tend to pay really well. So they don't tend to be wealthy. They don't tend to have any wealthy Nicaraguans except for uh, Nicaraguan families who are wealthier who went and bought beachfront houses. So you will find that, especially in like Ponoloya, you have a lot of old money houses that have been there for many decades and uh, are, are commonly like weekend homes or, or vacation homes for Nicaraguans. And then, of course, they rent them out for parties in a lot of cases. So you find a lot of Nicaraguans will go to the coast to party. But Nicaraguans generally see the coast as a place to either you're, you're from the coast and you're part of a very poor, small fishing uh, community and you're mostly working around service industries because that's what's available or the fishing industry because that's what's available. Or it is your weekend vacation spot and you're coming in from the big cities where people have uh, uh, more more upward mobile jobs and are investing in uh, time in the coast as just a place to get away. Not entirely unlike the United States. None of this should be surprising, which is why I'm surprised by the question, because there really isn't. Living in both and having been to nearly every beach in northern Nicaragua, definitely having been to every city in northern Nicaragua, I can tell you that the differences are incredibly minor. The things that that are different are purely because there's an ocean and sand there and fishing opportunities. That's about it. The culture doesn't change between the two, but be aware if you're looking at uh, living on the coast, you're either going to be in a traditional fishing village. Some, like Las Penitas, have grown up so much that you you don't really necessarily feel that day today. Uh, and Or you're going to be in an isolated zone where no one has been, such as Salinas Grandes and Tesoro, where uh, they're not enclaves. They don't have that feel, but they are really, really, really remote. And it basically feels like you've tried to get away from the village. So it would be like if you went to a small village and said, I like this village area. I like the vibe here. But I like to be just way out on my own, kind of like country living. So instead of village living, they're like the country living along the coast. So uh, you're just very isolated from your neighbors, lots of lawn, lots of space, maybe a lot of trees, mangroves, whatever between things. And uh, they don't have enough space uh, down there to really create a village, right? They're because between the the salt flats and the and the river, the the estuary, they're very they're very trapped in a in a small zone. So uh, that tends to be the things you find on the northern coast, and it just is what it is, right? It's uh, if you're looking for coastal living, you know what that means. It's ocean and beach and and small villages. And if you want big cities, then you can't be on the coast. The two are not going to mix. Here in Leon, it's only 12 minutes from the edge of the city to the some of the busiest beaches in the country. So they still have nightlife, right? The beaches still have have wild parties, lots of drinking, things to do six, seven nights a week. You can find things to do on the beach, but they are small communities. All of them are small communities. Now, where we do find a change is when we go into southern Nicaragua. Now, in central Nicaragua, there is a giant reserve. Now, up here in Leon, there's a small reserve, Juan Venado. There is a giant reserve in the middle of the country, and this separates northern Nicaragua from southern Nicaragua. Southern Nicaragua's coast, the Costa Esmeralda, is completely within the departmento of Rivas. Rivas has become much like the Nicoya and, and Guanacaste in Costa Rica, a relatively empty from a local population, but heavily used by tourist zone. So both countries, and this at traditionally was a single zone that was split between the two countries long ago. 
So there's a lot of similarities, a lot of the same coast, a lot of the same inland, a lot of the same traditionally, neither country used that zone. It isn't great for a lot of agricultural production, it isn't great for a lot of things, but it is a beautiful, tranquil area with a lot of nice coastlines, so very popular with retirees and with expats and enclaves and people looking to build new things that don't require local resources. So in both countries, those are up and coming areas in a way, but generally pretty empty and lacks a lot of local culture. So what we get in Rivas here, so first of all, Rivas is in Isthmus here. So the amount of land there is incredibly small with most of it being coastal. And if you want to look at it another way, essentially it's all coastal because on one side it is the ocean and on the other side it is the lake. So you could consider the lake to kind of be a lake coast. We don't normally use that term with that, but it kind of is. So especially with a lake that size. So you end up on this Isthmus, which has one city, the city of Rivas. Now, if you go to the city of Rivas, it's going to be basically like any other city in Nicaragua. It's completely normal Nicaraguan living. It doesn't even have a particularly large number of expats, more than a Chinandega would or a Boaco or a Huigalpa, but not as much as a Leon or a Granada or a Managua. Rivas, if you're moving into that zone, it's not your target, right? It just doesn't, it doesn't really make sense. It's not a tourist center in any way. It's just a kind of supply depot and logistics station for Southern Nicaragua. It is the city, the final city before shipments go into Costa Rica, for example. Uh, so, and it also has um, in its suburbs, the port going to Ometepe. So when you're living in this zone, in the coastal zone in Rivas, you have a completely different experience physically because you are cut off from the rest of the country and those beaches tend to be quite far from from their support city, but not dramatically far, right? Managua is still farther uh, than probably any of those to its cities on the coast, at least in travel time. So, uh, But what you have in Rivas is you tend to have less developed roads, you tend to have uh, very little Nicaraguan culture, because there just aren't very many Nicaraguans who live down there. Of course, there's some, right? There's always been some. And the new coastal highway is going through down there, so there's going to be a lot of changes as they start to connect that zone to the rest of the country. They're going to start integrating it in. So whether that makes it more touristy or makes it less touristy has yet to be seen. It's going to depend how Nicaraguans respond to that and how much Nicaraguans decide to start leveraging that zone for themselves or just kind of shaving it off as they have and leaving it for extra heroes for foreigners. But the thing that makes it really noticeable in Rivas is the Costa Esmeralda is, for all intents and purposes, one giant enclave. There are Nicaraguans who still live on the coast. There are still some fishing villages along the coast. There are still Nicaraguans living inland for sure from that. So mostly those are support villages for the coast. But if you're looking at Rivas for the coast, you're essentially looking at some type of enclave living, living because the entire coast really is functioning like a an enclave. Now, some of it is super remote. There are areas, because it's such an empty area, there are large swaths that are undeveloped and there's just nothing out there. And so it doesn't necessarily feel like an enclave. And you can argue that it's neither an enclave nor not an enclave. It's just empty. Uh, but there are big zones where you can get and just be like, oh, I'm out in the wild. I'm on dirt roads. I'm just out there. But when you get to neighbors, when you find people in most of that zone, as long as you're along the coast, basically they're all going to be foreigners. That is just that is just how it is. If you're in San Juan del Sur, yes, there's a ton of people who live there. There's still fishermen that work there. There's a ton of people who work there in support industries. The number of people who live there remains mostly Nicaraguan, but I don't think by the big margins that people like to say. There are a lot of expats that live down there. It is an expat, and there's whole regions around that are nothing but expats, whole enclave areas, like true gated full-on enclaves in the region. They're just everywhere. Um, and everything is marketed to foreigners, but there are so many tourists who come through San Juan del Sur, especially backpackers, that there's a ton of people who work in support jobs for them. And the number of people who are in town in San Juan del Sur is much larger than the number of people who live there. So there's a huge number of foreigners and some Nicaraguans from Managua, but definitely mostly foreigners who are in San Juan del Sur. And, and so that requires a number of support jobs. That makes it that on any given day, the number of people that are there leans heavily towards foreigners, but the number of people who live there permanently leans maybe a little bit towards Nicaraguans, but you won't feel that when you're there. If you move there, you are definitely moving into an expat enclave feeling zone.
nearly every beach around there is the same kind of thing, but the vibe will change a little bit. San Juan del Sur is mostly people who are looking for the, the bigger homes, the more American or North American style of living. They want to be around other foreigners all the time, or they like the view of the bay, which is very popular with North Americans and is absolutely beautiful and some of the best views in the country. The beaches around there start to have surfing because San Juan del Sur is a protected bay, so it doesn't have surfing. And a few of the beaches really nearby it are smaller bays. They also don't have surfing. But when you get farther out, you get the unprotected beaches again, even on the Costa Esmeralda, and you get some amazing surfing down there. So you have some expat communities there that are like surfing communities. So some, some of those expat communities are temporary backpackers and transient surfers. So you get that some in that zone as well. You get some really, really wild remote places that are very inaccessible. Uh, so it's, it's an odd duck in Rivas because you have some really big enclave areas, and then you have some areas that are very spread out and are are predominantly just extra and heroes who have bought little plots of land and want to be away from people that are okay living out in a remote area. And in many cases, it's people who didn't know that's what they were buying and bought sight unseen. And now that's what they're stuck with as a really common story down there. Uh, everything in Rivas is a completely different culture. If you're living down there, you're going to experience a completely different Nicaragua than the rest of us. So the things that you see on my show are almost entirely traditional Nicaragua. We're talking about the population of 6.7, 6.8 million people. This is what life is like pretty much across the entire country. Yeah, we can shave off the East Coast. That's a different culture as well. So we'll say 6 million people. And then the Mosquito Coast has its own culture, own language, its autonomous zone. Very, very different. When we're talking about Rivas, we're talking about a culture and experience of the people who live there is completely different than the people who live up here. It's not good or bad, it's just different. So when you're watching any shows or things that are filmed in that zone, in Popoyo, in Tola, in, in San Juan del Sur, in Rancho Santana, that is a different Nicaragua than this one. Yes, we're all under the same government and laws and, and border control, but the people who are down there, the experience that you have down there is nothing like the experience you have in the rest of the country. But if you go between those places, the general general vibe isn't going to change very much. So this is where you actually get a difference. You get the Rivas experience here in Nicaragua, which is anyone who is there, they are there for enclave living. And people who live there often will say, it's not an enclave, there's Nicaraguans everywhere. They are definitely in an enclave, right? Everything about it is isolating themselves from general Nicaraguan society. And nothing wrong with this, right? And Nicaragua is like, hey, we have a spot for all these foreigners who want to come down, want to spend money, want to be part of Nicaragua, but but they just don't like eating gallo pinto every day. They don't like, you know, do, going out and doing Nicaraguan music every night. They want to do their own things. They want to listen to American rock music. They want to listen to, you know, jazz. They want to, like, that's great. They have their own space for that. And it actually works out pretty well that uh, it's relatively isolated. So those of us who really want to be a part of Nicaraguan society, and that's one of the things that drives us here, then we have this huge area with loads of spaces that we can go to. And and for those who don't want to integrate, they want to do more of the oil and water and want the enclave style doing their own thing isolated away from Nicaragua, there is an entire zone where people can do that and have large communities, small communities, isolated homes, uh, get to food and resources and, and have access to other people doing the same thing within a close zone that you can speak English down there and, and, and like like you would never need to learn Spanish living down there. It always behooves you to, but you can easily live down there and speak English all the time. In the rest of the country, you'd be like, well, yeah, you're not gonna die. You can totally do it, but you're going to want to learn Spanish or you're gonna be missing out on a lot of social activities, right? It's just, you're just not gonna be able to talk to people the same, but it's a different thing, right? Because down there, you assume by moving down there, yes, you may interact with Nicaraguans, of course, but you are assuming that your life is gonna be based around other foreigners. And when you're in the North, basically, you, unless you know, if you live on the coast, you can kind of be in the middle. You could have a life that's predominantly foreigners. You are unlikely to, however, you may be half and half. But if you move away from the coast, if you're in normal cities here, chances are your life is going to be predominantly with Nicaraguans. You're going to be much more a part of normal society just by the nature of things, just by the nature of who you're next to. You're not going to find a house where you're living next to another foreigner very likely. It could happen, but it's unlikely. But on the coast, uh, it's at least 50-50. But in in Rivas, it is almost unheard of that your neighbor wouldn't be another foreigner 
if you're living along the coast. So that's where I think the big difference lies, and that's where the big cultural difference lies. So when we're talking about what nightlife is like here, when we're talking about what, what food is like here, when we're talking all those things, entertainment and, and just how life happens, Rivas and the Costa Esmeralda is its own animal. Not the city of Rivas, the Departamento. If you're living along that coast, you will perceive that the coast and inland are two different places, but that's not what's happening. It's enclave versus non-enclave living. The very fact that it's funny, the person who asked this is so adamant that he doesn't live in an enclave, but then he, he, he says how the coast is one way and everything else is another, and it's his coast. It's his enclave coast is what, because he has no experience in Nicaragua. He sees all of Nicaragua, including the northern coast, as being this completely different animal, and that is why. Uh, and so if you're, if you're wondering what the lifestyles are like, I think you can pretty well picture, as long as you can maintain, wait, there's no major populations on the water. Okay, so all coastal living in real Nicaragua, as we call it, northern Nicaragua, is, is small villages. And inland, you have small villages, big cities, all those things. You have that mix of sizes. And if you're looking at the southern coast, then you're looking at a essentially guaranteed enclave life. Now, you can make an effort of going into Rivas. You can make an effort of traveling from there. Some people just love having the style of houses that are down there or the, the type of coastline that's down there because it is physically a different coast. Um, and if you're just you're like, wow, I want to live in an isolated area, but I want to be part of Nicaragua. I know people who do this, right? And they travel into Managua. They travel into other cities and they, and they participate in real Nicaraguan society and then go back home. And yes, they live in an enclave -y kind of area, but they're making an effort to not do it in an enclave way. And you can do that pretty easily in a lot of the Costa Esmeralda because it's not that far. Like, Nicaragua is not a big place. It's easy to travel between zones. It's easy to get public transportation if you own a car. It's easy to zip around. So you can do that. You can make that happen. So don't rule out the Costa Esmeralda because, because being an enclave area sounds like a negative. It could be for you, but, and if you want to force yourself, like, I just want to live with Nicaraguans every day, and I want to be in the city, and I just want to be in the mix and really feel it, well, yeah, it's probably the wrong place for you, but if you want to just have a nice, quiet home, and, and you don't go out that often, it won't make any difference, right? You're at home either way, in either place. It's when you make an effort of going out on the weekend, well, maybe you're going to travel around the country, then living in the Costa Esmeralda may give you the views and the style of house and just the surf that you want, the, the mountains or whatever, uh, and then you can go uh, participate in Nicaragua as you want. So that could work out just fine for you. I hope that answers the question for people who are actually wondering, and uh, as always, like and subscribe. If you like to support the channel, you can buy me a coffee. Hey, buy me a coffee.com slash Scott Allen Miller, and I'll see all of you tomorrow.